I'm uh, Riley Klitschke. I'm out of the Hastings location. I do sales there, and we're going to be going over the S700 cab controls. So we're going to start on the joystick here. Um, your top buttons here are going to be for your return to cut, which is going to be on two. One or three is going to be all the way up or to current height. That's all settable. This is going to be for your unloading tube um, to start unloading your header functions up and down and lateral tilt and then your reel functions or deck plates on a corn head your auto engage for your auto track uh, E is also going to be a programmable button um, there's going to be more buttons on the back of the joystick here on your hydro handle they're going to be for fore and aft if it's equipped on that combine and there's going to be two more programmable buttons on the back now moving to the console here um, we're going to have your fine tune on your adjust for your head height, uh, your reel speed. This button here is going to be to unlock any of the controls for your programmable buttons. It starts up every time, it's going to be locked. And you're going to have your idle, high idle, and wide open throttle settings. Uh, here's going to be road mode for going down the road is going to lock out all your functions so you can't drop your head and in a pro drive you're going to have one and two a parking brake and a diff lock this is going to be your separator engage your header engage um, beacon lights hazards uh, work lights radio functions here your heater control functions here and then over on the right hand side you're going to have your threshing clearance, which you can adjust this knob here on the right. You're going to have your rotor speed, which if it was engaged, we could adjust. Fan speed. You're going to have chaffer settings and sieve settings, which all can be adjusted with the knob. And then you're going to have, if it's got a power cast, uh, your wind compensation adjust right here. And then these here are also going to be programmable buttons, this one, two, three, and four. And those are all set up in the display underneath control setup. Or there is a hot button on the Gen 4 screens at the bottom. Hi, I'm Devin Gall with Landmark Implement, the Arapaho location. Uh, today we're going to go over some calibrations on your S700 combines. So the first calibration we're going to go over today is our header calibration. Um, you're going to want to do this uh, when you first hook onto your header for the first time uh, each year and then uh, also if you have a, a new header. So today we're going to cover the corn head here first. Uh, what the header calibration does is it um, calibrates our height sensors on the header and kind of fine tunes them. Uh, so on our 4600 display what we're going to do first is we're going to go to menu under machine settings, we have calibrations and procedures. We're going to touch that button, and we have harvest calibrations, and on the left we have header. We're going to touch on that, and then down here at the bottom is our header calibration. And you're going to want to make sure your single point is hooked up, um, so we have our electrical connections going to the header. Um, tells us exactly what we need to have done. We're going to hit calibrate. We need to set our engine to high idle. And then also we're going to lower our feeder house to the ground. It is also good to make sure that your contour master is uh, in the center position. A note on that, if you have trouble with the sensor calibrating, sometimes it is helpful to cheat the feeder house lateral tilt to one direction or the other to get the calibration to go. So we have the header on the ground. We go ahead and hit start. It wants us to level the header fore and aft. Once this hits zero, we'll be able to go to the next step. Lower feeder house, we're on the ground. So now we just press and hold the header raise switch. It's going to tell us when it no longer feels movement on the height sensors. Calibration successful. We're going to hit save, and now it's going to go into a tuning calibration. We're going to hit next to continue, 
and then press and hold the header lower switch. And it's going to kind of bounce the combine a little bit. It's going to move the header up and down um, to fine tune those header height sensors. It says successful. We're going to hit save. And that's it for our header calibration. Now we're going to talk about our feeder house raised speed calibration. Um, goes hand in hand with our header calibration. It's a good idea to do it first time you hook up to our header each year. To find that, we're going to go into our menu, machine settings, calibrations and procedures, and it's going to be under our header. Uh, we've got our list of calibrations here. Uh, about halfway down, we see our feeder house raised speed calibration. Go ahead and hit calibrate. We have to be on level ground with the engine running at high idle. We'll hit start. Have to level our feeder house fore and aft. Then it wants us to lower the feeder house with the header resting on the ground. What this is calibrating is how much oil flow it's going to take to, to raise this head up and down um, so you can um, calibrate it so it'll have a quicker response in the field. We'll hit next and we're going to press and hold the header raise switch. It will tell you when this step is finished. These first few times up and down, um, it does take a while as it's slowly building oil flow to those lift cylinders. Now we're going to lower it. is going to slowly lower towards the ground. Go back to raise. As we continue going, it's going to start raising a little bit faster each time. Lower again. Just remember to keep holding the lower switch. running through our raise and lower sequences here. Calibration complete and we will hit save. And that is uh, how we calibrate our feeder house raise speed. Now we're going to walk through our moisture sensor temperature calibration. Uh, it is important to calibrate our moisture sensor temperature um, to have accurate yield data. Uh, this goes hand in hand with our mass flow vibration calibration um, and our yield calibration. So to find this we're going to go to our menu, machine settings, and calibrations and procedures. Under harvest here we see our moisture sensor temperature. Then we just hit calibrate. Um, you can see here uh, you need to do this calibration if uh, the active yield monitor or associated components have been replaced or adjusted or your moisture sensor readings aren't accurate. We're going to go ahead and hit calibrate. Uh, right now it's reading that the amb ambient air uh, temperature is 51 degrees. Um, it is actually about 68 outside right now this morning. So we're going to adjust that up. 68 and then hit save and we've calibrated our moisture sensor temperature. Now we're going to do the mass flow vibration um, calibration. Uh, in this calibration we're going to run the machine so make sure everyone is clear of the machine. Um, what this does is um, calibrates our mass flow sensor back in the um, at the base of the fountain auger. Um, this is what the grain hits and tells you what the crop is yielding. Um, so it is important to do this from time to time uh, to ensure accurate uh, yield readings. So to find this, we're going to go to our menu on our 4600, machine settings and calibrations and procedures. 
Under here we see our mass flow vibration calibration. And then you're going to want to change this uh, when you change crops or heads. So we're going to hit calibrate. We have to have the machine in park. You can see uh, as I put it in park, those will change the checks. We're going to want our header in the harvest position, separator and header engaged. We're going to engage those. And then the engine, we're going to want to run up to high idle. Once we have all these checks, we can go ahead and hit next. And it is going to sit here and uh, for about a minute and just sense the vibration that that mass flow sensor is receiving from the combine. Um, so that won't be in account for our yield reading. Says calibration complete, we can hit save. Idle our engine down, kick off our header and separator, and we should be good to go. That's the end of our mass flow vibration calibration. Next, I'm going to step through how to do a yield calibration on our um, S700 combines with a 4600 processor. Uh, first, we're going to go into menu, then calibrations and procedures. And then we're going to scroll down to the bottom where it says yield calibration. If your machine is equipped with active yield and you want to run a manual yield calibration, you will have to go in and turn active yield off. Um, running these calibrations uh, is very important, um, especially when we are talking about um, yield accuracy. Um, you can see on top we have our bar graph here and it shows that right now we just have the factory calibration applied. So to start a calibration we're just going to go in and hit record and then start. Once we are um, start harvesting through the field we're going to see our mass flow rate jump up and it'll show us a pounds per second reading and it'll say either low flow, medium flow, or high flow. We want to get calibrations um, within each of those flow ranges. Uh, to adjust for that, going through the field, you're going to want to just vary your speed. Um, and then the sample yield um, over here should counts up our total pounds. So we are not in the field right now, but this would be counting up as we're harvesting. Um, if you have a grain cart with a scale, um, you can harvest that, stop. Um, you will not want to unload on the go while you're doing this. And then we'll hit done when that pops up. And then we will be able to go in and match scale weight. There will be a number one in there after we do a calibration. Once we get our scale reading from our grain carts or our trucks, we'll hit that match scale weight and then we'll be able to type in the actual weight um, of, the, of the load that we um, did on our yield calibration. As we get more calibrations in those low and high flow ranges, uh, this calibration quality is going to start to climb up um, and you'll have a, a good yield calibration um, on your combine and you can be confident in your yield numbers that you're seeing. Uh, that is how to do a manual yield calibration. If your combine is equipped with active yield, um, to go in and make sure that that is turned on and calibrated, we're gonna go to our menu machine settings and calibrations and procedures. If we scroll all the way to the top, we see we have active yield. Now to operate active yield, you must have a Starfire receiver on the machine with a good TCM calibration. We're going to just turn our active yield master on. Um, from there, the combine does all the work in the background. Uh, just keep in mind, as with a manual yield calibration and active yield. Um, we're going to want to have done the mass flow vibration calibration. Um, so here we can see our crop type. Uh, as we start harvesting, it's going to accept samples and it shows you the time of the last accepted sample and then it's going to show you your quality of calibration. Um, once you have um, a few calibration loads in there, you will see your yield start to read a little more accurately. That is how we go in and make sure that our active yield is turned on. 
Now we're going to go over our chassis calibration for our uh, active terrain adjust. Um, active terrain adjust is housed in the ICA2 tab. Uh, you can see it's on. Uh, this is the function of the combine that as we go up and down uh, certain terrain, um, it will adjust some of our combine settings. So uh, a good thing to do here at the first part of the year before we get started is to go ahead and um, do our chassis calibration. So if we go to menu, machine settings and calibrations and procedures. We see our active terrain adjust tilt calibration. We will touch on that. Uh, it says this calibration um, calibrates the chassis tilt. So we're going to hit calibrate. We're going to want to be on level ground and follow the man's for the calibration. A uh, good rule of thumb is if you do have a head on, I would put it um, in the harvest position. It says move to level ground with header in harvest position. Once you've done that, calibration is complete. Next, we're going to do a deck plate spacing calibration for our corn heads. Um, so if we go to our menu, machine settings and calibrations and procedures, and go to our header button off on the left side, we can see at the very top we've got our deck plate spacing calibration. We'll go ahead and touch on that. Um, if we have to replace the deck plate um, sensor or any of the components is when we'll want to perform this calibration and probably the first time of each season. We're going to hit calibrate. Uh, we've got to have the combine in field mode, engine running at high idle, and then we're going to follow commands. I'm going to go ahead and idle up the combine and then hit start. Now it's going to have us hold the deck plate close switch. to continue holding it. Now we're going to hold the open switch. Calibration is complete after that. Now we're going to calibrate um, the AutoTrack RoSense wands. Um, if this is the first time you're hooking up to a corn head equipped with uh, the RoSense wands on our Gen 4s, uh, we're going to have to go through this calibration uh, in order to get AutoTrack RoSense to work. Um, the RoSense calibration is not where the rest of the calibrations are at on this 4600. If you get to the RoSense calibration, you can go to one of two spots. You can either go to Guidance down here on our Quick Menu. If you don't have it down there, you can go to Menu, Applications, and then AutoTrack Guidance. To find our RoSense calibration, we're going to hit the little setup arrow on top of the screen. Got our guidance master and then row sense. So we can turn our row sense on, GPS steer in, and then row sense status is where our calibration is going to be. You can see what our voltages are down here. Um, as long as you are not going through the field and there's no corn going past those sensors, we can hit cal. Uh, it tells you the settings that you need to have. We're going to hit begin calibration. We need to have the machine level, no material being processed, header is raised, machine is in park, and the sensor is installed, so we're going to hit next. And that is how you calibrate um, our AutoTrack RoSense wands. Now I'm just going to highlight a few of the buttons that we can find on our machine settings tab under the menu on our 4600. Um, so if we go to menu and then machine settings on the top left, uh, we can see we have um, a bunch of tiles in here. Uh, we've touched on the calibrations procedures and the control setup. Um, some other important ones in here and some of the functions that they do are going to be grain handling. Uh, this estimates your grain level. Uh, it's a good idea at the beginning of the season uh, to go ahead and set your empty level if you're empty and then once you get full to set your full level. Um, this is also where you will come in and do your moisture calibration and then you can also get to your yield calibration as well. Also, um, if we X out of there, we have our harvest settings. Um, in here, um, if you need to adjust any of these settings, uh, you can come in here and just put your plus or minus button and it will go ahead and change uh, our threshing clearance, for example. Uh, we don't have our machine running, but once we start it up, we can change our threshing speed, cleaning fan speed. Uh, we can adjust our sieve and chaffer and some of that stuff in here. 
um, header. This is going to have some of our sensitivities and speeds. Um, so if you want to increase your header raise and lower speed, you can touch on this tile and bump it up a little bit. Uh, same goes for the tilt speed, the height sensitivity, and the tilt sensitivity, um, and some of this stuff down here. Um, this auto control at the bottom, this is where you're going to turn on some of your automatic functions that go along with our one, two, and three buttons on our hydro handle. Um, so if you, um, for example, want your fore aft resume on, you can turn that on, or if you want your deck plate position resume off, you, know, you can turn that off, and it shows it what it what it's going to do under these buttons on the left. Um, if you need to change anything with your corn head, you can come in there. Um, for example, we do have an eight row corn head on now. We'll just change that to eight. And then this is where you're going to set your record stop height. Um, so as you come in um, for recording, uh, you will manually adjust your corn head height and then set to current height. And then that is your new record stop height. If you have a reel installed on your corn head or um, side spinners, uh, you will check mark this reel installed box. Uh, some of the other ones down through here, uh, we've got residue management. Uh, this is where we're going to adjust our um, spreader width. Um, so this adjusts the speed of our um, power cast tailboards. And then we can also adjust the direction of the throw on that as well. Um, and then uh, we can swap that once we do have it if we're trying to compensate for some wind. Um, some of the newer machines will automatically swap as you turn around. Uh, this is a model year 19, um, so we're not going to have that um, function on this one. Uh, but you can also set up uh, one of the buttons on the hydro handle to swap our throw on the spreader. The last one I'll touch through is the transmission. Um, this is where you can set uh, your max speeds um, in any given range. Um, so if you want your harvest speed to be 5.5, you can come in here and adjust that. Um, that is all I'll cover in the machine settings tab. Now I'm going to walk through how to adjust our moisture or do a moisture calibration. Um, if your machine is reading off on the moisture and you've um, taken it to the elevator or have a hand tester, and you know we're off, um, and you need to come in here and adjust what the combine is reading. Uh, where we'll go for that is going to be our menu, machine settings, and then grain handling. Uh, down here on the moisture box, if we touch this uh, correction box, um, we can turn on our alarms. So if you want to alarm you, if you get above 18% moisture, you can turn that on, and then same for a minimum. So let's say uh, we've been harvesting and our combine is reading that we're in uh, 15 moisture corn. Uh, we took a load to town and the elevator shows that we are at 17.5. Um, so to do this correction, uh, we're basically uh, two and a half points off. So we'll just do a positive 2.5 in here. And that's gonna bump our uh, 15 moisture up to match the elevator moisture of 17.5. If for some reason um, your moisture sensor um, stops reading and your moisture has been pretty consistent out the, throughout the day and you want to run and finish out the day and still be able to document, you can come down here and check this box that says use fix moisture and then you can just type in the moisture um, that you're running and it will just assume that all the green coming through the machine is at this 15% moisture. All right, now we're going to go over some of our um, tilt calibrations for our feeder house. So if we go to menu, calibrations and procedures, and then header, we've got our feeder house lateral tilt range calibration and our lateral tilt speed calibration. I'm going to go to our lateral tilt range calibration and hit calibrate. And then we'll hit start. As with all the calibrations, it's going to tell you what um, to do. So it wants us to tilt the feeder house all the way to the left. We're going to hold our left down arrow on our hydro handle until we get all the way and then hit next. Then we're going to go all the way to the right. Once we've hit the right limit, 
We'll hit next. And the calibration is complete. The next one that goes hand in hand in that, with that is our feeder house lateral tilt speed calibration. We'll come in there and hit calibrate. Once our engine running at high idle, fully raise the feeder house and manipulate the header switches. Um, one thing to note as well on these uh, tilt calibrations, you're going to want to not have a header hooked on. I'm going to go ahead and idle it up to high idle and then hit start. I'm going to hold the tilt left button. And it says the calibration will proceed automatically. Switch it to the right. As we're holding the tilt right, um, we will see the feeder house um, slowly start to um, tilt to the right. Um, the first couple times, just like our header raise speed, it takes a little while. Switch back to the left. Back to the right. We'll start to tilt right and left a little bit faster after we get past these, those first couple. Back to the left. tilt on our feeder house is starting to get with it and we're able to run through this pretty quickly we can see we're on step 20 of 21 and the calibration is complete okay now we're going to go over um, our real position calibration uh, this would be the only calibration that would be different from a corn head um, so if we go into our menu under machine settings we'll go to calibrations and procedures and then we'll touch on the header on the left and at the very bottom we see our real position calibration. We'll go ahead and hit calibrate. We can see that the combine needs to be in field mode, engine at high idle. I'll idle the engine up and then we'll hit start. It's going to have us work the reel um, in every different direction here. So the first one is hold the extend switch. going to lower the reel, continue holding the button. And we'll do the reel raise. And the last one will be to retract. Calibration is complete, so then we'll hit save, um, and that is how we do the real position sensor. Now we're going to walk through um, some header calibrations for uh, the flex draper that we have hooked on our combine right now, on a S700 with the Gen 4. Uh, so first we're going to go to our menu, and under machine settings we have calibrations and procedures. And then we've got our header button off to the left here. 
Um, first thing to do is going to be our uh, feeder house raise speed calibration. Now that we've um, switched heads or hooked on to this head for the first time this year, um, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll hit calibrate. We've got to be on level ground with the engine running at high idle. So I'll go ahead and idle up the engine and we'll hit start. Wants us to level the feeder house tilt fore and aft and then lower the feeder house so it's resting on the ground. Now that we have it on the ground, we'll go ahead and hit next. And we'll press and hold the header raise switch. And then we'll do the lower. This calibration essentially um, lets the combine figure out how heavy the header is and how fast it needs to pump oil to our raise and raise cylinders on the feeder house um, for the head. continues to have us raise and lower the head. It'll get faster each time. Calibration is complete, so then we'll go ahead and hit save. Now we're going to do the header calibration um, for our uh, flex draper that we have hooked on to our S700 uh, combine. Um, to calibrate our header, we're going to go into menu, machine settings, and calibrations and procedures, and then we're going to hit our header tab, and then down here towards the bottom is our header calibration. When we touch on that, we'll go ahead and hit calibrate at the bottom. Um, here's the um, things that we have to do um, to get ready for our calibration. The first one is set engine to high idle. I'll go ahead and hit start. It wants us to level the header fore and aft. And then we're going to lower the feeder house so the header is resting on the ground. Go ahead and hit next. And then we're just going to press and hold the header raise switch. So that just calibrated our height sensors. Now it's going to go into a tuning calibration. So we'll go ahead and hit next and save through here. And then we're going to hold the uh, header lower switch. calibration was successful so we'll hit save and we have successfully calibrated our header. We will touch on um, some of the resume functions for our flex flexible draper header. Um, so if we go to our menu under machine settings we see header and then we have um, our auto control button here. 
Um, we're going to want the height resume, height sensing, the feeder house float we will want off, the lateral tilt we will keep on, dial a speed, um, and then the fore aft resume will have off, and then we've got the real position resume on. Over here on the left, we can see uh, which button activates each function. So if I engage just the head and hit one, it's going to raise our header up and raise the reel up. If I push three, it's going to lower us down. If I want to adjust my reel to where I want it in the field mode, I will just press and hold three till we flash on the corner post and that has saved that setting. So now if I push one, it raises up the reel. And if I push three, it brings the reel back to where I set it on the previous mode. Now that is a quick rundown on auto header controls with um, a flexible draper header.